Hello and welcome to the Hindustan Times Leadership Studio. I'm privileged to be joined by Mr. Kavinder Khurana. He's the Managing Director of Tesla Power India. Um, Mr. Khurana, welcome and thanks for joining us uh, at Hindustan Times. Thank you, Alicia. Now, Tesla Power did come to India only about a year ago and in this time, uh, you've set lofty targets for yourself. You want to participate in the energy transition story in India, particularly for electric vehicles and building out the infrastructure aspect to this. Um, and just, we were dis just like we were discussing, there is a bit of a chicken and egg equation always, whether the infrastructure comes first or whether the vehicles come first and where, uh, you know, uh, charging points have been deployed, it's mostly considered a marketing expense by OEMs. Um, so there's not a very serious bet that has been made, uh, you know, by private operators and in actually installing charging points. What do you think of the journey India will have to make to ensure that we have a robust infrastructure to ensure that our EVs can actually, you know, drive longer distances on the roads and the range anxiety that we often talk about can be taken care of? Yeah, this has been a consistent uh, question and apprehension in the minds of the Indian consumers. Uh, if you remember in 2021, uh, we had a press conference in which our global MD, Mr. John Ratsinas was also here from USA. And we declared that our company's target would be to set up 5,000 EV charging stations in the country by 2025. So in the pursuit of doing that, we had written a lot of letters and requests to the government also and the PSUs also. So the idea is that anybody who is investing into an EV charging station today may not be having a viable business for the next two years or three years till there is a, a substantial number of vehicles to be charged. Sure. Uh, till that time, how to sustain? And if the charging stations are not there, the consumer is obviously having the range anxiety and the other problems. So in 2021 itself, Government of India mandated all the oil PSUs to set up charging infrastructure in the country. So we are in talks with the, all the three PSUs uh, in oil sector, where our proposal has been to them that, okay, we will be operating, setting up, commissioning and operating uh, the EV charging stations. And we requested for uh, space, which has been agreed by them. So till date, on the petrol pumps and outside petrol pumps, we have already set up about 700 multi-brand outlets of EV charging stations with Bharat Stage 1, uh, Bharat AC1 and Bharat DC1 charging facilities wherein we have slow charging and fast charging modules. So we intend to increase this number by to up to uh, 5,000 by 2025 and we are very gung-ho and confident that we'll overachieve it. Well, on that note, uh, you know, you mentioned that out of the 500 charging points you do have, they are multi-brand. From a customer perspective, this can often be a little confusing, right? Because you need to have multiple apps on your phones and then to identify, you know, you, I mean, you of course have vehicles of different makes and models. Uh, so does a charger comply or, you know, or does my vehicle uh, comply with this particular uh, charger? So there are all those different permutations and combinations that work out. And for a customer, it makes life a little difficult. What do you think is the way forward in a scenario when we are just setting up infrastructure and we have the opportunity to streamline some of these things and you know come up with uh, perhaps models or even policies that can uh, impose some uniform standards for operators? Absolutely. So Niti Aayog has already given the uniform standards. So all the OEMs in two-wheelers and four-wheelers have to make the charging ports common and of same size so that there is no problem. In our charging stations, we have already got that ability that any type of e-vehicle, be it a two-wheeler, three-wheeler or a four-wheeler, can be charged. The older versions have different uh, you know, sockets or nozzles to charge for which we have the attachments which are variable and can be changed. Uh, but going forward, I think this problem will get solved with the standardization in place and uh, all the OEMs have already accepted and they are now manufacturing in the standardized models. Right, so you don't think that uh, customers will need to have a... Uh, no, a not anymore. <laughs> I think the... Remember how there were different chargers of mobile phones 10 years ago and then all boiled down to only one C type. Correct. So that is so that's exactly, going to happen? That's exactly what is happening. Well, that's the expectation. If EVs have to scale, uh, you know, some convenience in terms of charging also will be important. Um, now about profitably running uh, charging stations, also you did say that you know till there is a certain amount of utilization, making money off of them will be difficult. But how are you approaching uh, this, uh, you know, this environment? And do you have long-term plans with respect to profitability, or are you seeing that uh, you know utilization is enough to make 
uh, you know, what you are installing at this point profitable already? So uh, the charging stations that we are setting up, we see that they are going to be viable from day one. Because the charging stations that we are setting up are not only the charging stations. They are also the battery swapping stations Understood. and they are also the battery selling stations. Because we are a battery company, we have all the range of battery from two wheelers to three wheelers to four wheelers. So from the same kiosk or an outlet, we'll have viability by selling the, vehicle, uh, the batteries which are right now required by the IC, uh, that is internal combustible engine for starting the engine. And gradually when the uh, number of e-vehicles increase, the charging will also happen and the swapping will also happen. So in our case, uh, luckily, uh, we are going to be viable from day one. Okay. Well, I mean, you've packaged the proposition in a way that, you, that, that ensures that you are. Uh, but segueing a little bit to your other business, uh, you know, which is also batteries for electrical supply. Um, tell us uh, what the market is currently looking like. Uh, you know, what role do you think that a company like yours, you know, which still is in the early stages in India will play and how much of a market share are you going for? So in India, there is a market size of about 70,000 crore, Alicia, every year. Uh, predominantly dominated by uh, lead acid batteries. Uh, other chemistries are also taking over, but it will take time for them to become popular and, uh, you know, uh, scale up. So we are having complete range of batteries, right from motorcycle batteries to solar batteries or inverter batteries or UPS batteries, which is also in lead acid and also in lithium ion. So the best model that we could propose in a country like India, in a market like India, which is having a lot of power inequality or disbalance. So to uh, create balance in power between the grid supply and the solar or the wind energy, the batteries are the key solution. Battery energy storage system is the key solution. Because of the prohibitive capex required to install so many batteries, so it's unviable in certain projects. So this year we introduced a model called Power as a Service, wherein we are providing battery energy storage systems on leasing model. So we are open to lease it out to MSME, large corporates or any other users who are using batteries in bulk and they can uh, really create sustainable energy solutions by using batteries. So prohibitive capex will not be a problem anymore. Uh, leasing, maintenance and uh, disposal of the batteries after they have finished their useful life is going to be responsibility of Tesla Power USA. Right. You know, my last question would be, what do you think is a sustainable battery chemistry if there is one or do you think there will be a, a you know, multiplicity of solutions that will coexist that can sustainably and also uh, in a cost efficient manner meet India's energy needs? Uh, so it's a very uh, difficult to answer question, uh, debatable in fact. But my, I'm giving my personal opinion. Uh, my opinion is that we have been in and around lead acid batteries for more than 70 years now. It's a known devil. We know how to recycle it. We know how to use every component of the battery once again after it is uh, expired or it is, uh, you know, uh, after its end of life. For other chemistries like lithium ion, it is just a landfill right now. There is no recycling, unfortunately. To be sure, we're talking not just about automotive uh, applications, but different applications. Yeah. So lead acid is going to remain in use for at least next 20 years, that is my personal opinion, and it is going to dominate. Uh, but other chemistries like hydrogen fuel cells are, uh, you know, ecologically and economically viable solutions are definitely going to take over lead acid batteries. Uh, but I don't think lithium ion taking over lead, lead, lead acid batteries anymore. Interesting. Thanks so much for uh, sharing your thoughts with us and for chatting with us today. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Alicia. Thank you.